fact that Black Lives Matter can't be lost in the temporary hype of a three-word hashtag. It can't be forgotten in a month-long movement there to remain, a short-lived, short-term trend. It should extend into the workings of policy implementation and daily conversations that refuse to be quiet about disadvantage and privilege. And though my skin does not define me, I believe there must be an intentionality about how we navigate ethnicity. That we should work to becoming a society that's just as eager about tackling racial bias as we are about ending coronavirus. That sees racial inequality and prejudice mentality for exactly what it is. A global pandemic so systemically ingrained within the workings of the world's institutions and establishments. To see it as anything less takes the form of ignorance. Racism is not subjective or exclusively American. Inequality is a reality and is evident in the lives of those who look like me. A constant reminder ever present in westernized curriculums obscuring black and Asian history, in white dominated and elitist universities, in workplace microaggressions that we face in businesses and companies and in how even today number 10 has never been the residence of an ethnic minority and yes, in police force and brutality, in how a nation that sees itself as representative can be so rooted in prejudice that exists both explicitly and subtly. In the fact that in person you may not have been witness to a police officer kneeling on a black man's neck, not discrediting the full effects of BAME inequality that are ever present in our city. Discrimination is not a new development and it's not something that we should only vocalise when it seems relevant or convenient but the everyday experience of the marginalised, the preconceptions internalised that we have to work to realise and decode. You see true change can only come from engagement, from self-education, from constructive communication that is able to overcome white fragility and uncomfortability, that is how we move towards reconciliation. We're living in times where it's not enough to not be racist and still be silent, where silence becomes the sound of compliance that speaks louder than actual defiance. To young people today I urge you, until the time comes where our generation will be the ones influencing the future of our policies and strategies that feed into how we are able to internalise the complex reality of injustice. Don't be complacent in just having an awareness of racial unfairness. Use what you have now to be the change.